again, just a little housekeeping before we get going here, because there is another seminar that starts at 1015, so we're going to need to clear out of here pretty quick unless you're sticking around for the communication seminar. Um, I'd like to introduce who we have up here on stage. We have Ron Minter, the Assistant National Voluntary Services Director with me this morning. I have Rich Tulfa, who is the Chair of the Interman Hospital Voluntary Services Committee meeting. He's from Florida. Carolyn Small is with me from Georgia. Uh, Jerome Washington's not up here with us right now. He's on the committee as well from Nevada. And Jose Garcia, uh, he's not here at the convention, doing some family stuff back home in Texas. But I want to thank the uh, committee for what they do. Uh, they, they're charged with a lot of stuff throughout the year, and they do a great job at getting it done. So thank you, committee members, for what you do uh, each and every day and for your involvement in your local communities. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Please give them a round of applause. Um, I want to thank each and every one of you for getting up bright and early this morning to come down and join us to discuss the Voluntary Services Department and some of the things that we have going on at DAV. So we'll go ahead and get moving along here. Uh, you can see my farmer's only profile pick up here. Um, we're, we're charged with a lot of things. You got Ron's pretty mug shot up there as well. And Katie Geppinger, who's a supervisor of the department. Um, we're, we're involved with a lot of things in voluntary services, not just in the hospital, but in the community with DAV's involvement with the adaptive sports program. Um, and just raising awareness for DAV in general, whether that's through a scholarship fund, through recognizing an outstanding volunteer for the year, um, just a variety of things. Our contact information is up there, and when this seminar is all completed or convention's over, all of these presentations should be posted on the members only portal at DAV. So you can log in with your membership number, download this, or do a hyperlink to it, and uh, utilize this presentation to your heart's content. Here's the rest of the team we have Ashley Pelly. Uh, she's responsible for our involvement with the Winter Sports Clinic and the Tea Tournament, so she has a direct interaction with a lot of you as departments and chapters who help sponsor and support these events, as well as our corporate sponsors for both of those events. Holly Jackson, a Marine veteran, uh, is my assistant. Uh, Connie Kinney, a lot of you have had interactions with her. Her primary focus is the DAV Transportation Network from start to finish. That's when we go to order vehicles, get them decaled, get them up and out and back out to you. Uh, Nicole Lensweiler, she's a correspondent, and her focus is on the local veterans assistance program. So a lot of your uh, LVAP uh, coordinators probably hear from her on a pretty routine basis. Um, I'll ask you to continue to send in your reports as timely as possible so we can keep up to date with those hours. Pam Henning is relatively new to our team, but not new to DAV. Uh, she's working with all the HSCs and gathering the hours uh, for your volunteer drivers, miles, and veterans transported. Chris Ripberger uh, is a floats and does the same thing. And then Odie Hall, a lot of you have interactions with as a BABS rep or DEP or honorary rep, so she does your certifications. Everybody that I just called off is cross trained and can do the exact same thing anybody else can do, but uh, you have good points of references for anybody that you're calling. Let's talk about Volunteer for Veterans. Uh, we're really proud of this resource. It's new, it's relatively new still. It's an online tool designed to help promote volunteerism in your community. Uh, we have a lot of great opportunities that are in there, but currently we're still lopsided. We have more volunteers registered than we have veterans needs. So if you know a veteran in your community who has access to a computer, can utilize a computer, have them build a profile and volunteer for veterans and tell us what their needs are. They can be as simple as changing a light bulb on your front porch uh, to doing some minor uh, home maintenance outside. And I mean minor, I'm not talking about doing a, reno a renovation of a bathroom. I'm talking about maybe fixing a handrail on a porch or you know maybe something, something like that, working outside, cleaning out a flower bed, uh, removing weeds, you know, those type of things. It's designed to complement the current LVAP program that we have in existence today, but it doesn't require you to do any more paperwork because when the job is completed in Volunteer for Veterans, we run a report at the end of the month and import those hours so the individual volunteering receives credit for his or her uh, time helping somebody in the community. Um, again, this is primarily focused on getting involved outside of VA hospitals, but more in the community. 
right, so we have all kinds of great resources and things that are available for you, uh, whether that's the DAV Transportation Network, whether that's the Youth Scholarship Program, um, resources for LVAP, we have posters. Uh, all you have to do is reach out to our team members and tell them, hey, I'd like to get a bro some brochures, 25 of this, 25 of that. We'll send that stuff to you. And we spend a lot of money annually updating these resources and ensuring they're up to date, uh, that they have the information that's needed. They're fresh, they look great. Uh, they're extremely professional. Um, I would definitely say with your scholarships, if you're a representative in a hospital, take advantage of our posters that you can post up in a uh, common area have the brochures. If you don't have the opportunity to brief the youth that are coming on, hand that information off to the voluntary services chief and encourage them to advise the children volunteering that they might be eligible for the scholarship if they donate their time to DAV. Here's a bunch of links to the videos that we have done uh, in, in, with help from Dan Clare and the communication staff. They're how-to videos for volunteer for veterans. We're going to show you a real funny one as we uh, transition from me doing the presentation to Ron taking over, but we have a video up here, it's a how to register. We have a video, how to uh, add an opportunity, how to complete an opportunity, and how to search for opportunity, opportunities, excuse me. They're very short, two minute videos that you can take back and share with your chapter. Um, I think we, we do ourselves a disservice by not sharing the information that's being passed on, not saying everybody does that, uh, but we have all these resources, and this is a, just a, a fire hose of information that's coming to you guys when you're here at the convention. Please go back and take advantage of it. Check all these videos out. There's a lot of time and effort put into that, uh, and I think they're very helpful and beneficial. And, again, you can refer back to them. They're like quick two-minute videos uh, that will help you through the process of navigating this new resource. This right here is an annual joint review. And so what happens is, in VA voluntary services, this is in the hospital, uh, we get a summary annual joint review one time a year. And what we're finding is that sometimes these annual joint reviews, when they come in, they're not being signed off on uh, by a representative there. If you as a department have somebody appointed to be a representative, it's imperative that they show up to these, uh, these meetings. They're quarterly meetings, and this tells everything that's happening at that facility on a financial level, from the chapter, department, and on a uh, you know a volunteer level. So I have a head count of how many volunteers are at. I'll just pick on Tulsa, Oklahoma at this point. Um, they're not a they're not a offender of not sending me this stuff, but I'm going to use them as an example. So now I know what's going on in Tulsa, and I read these. Every one of these gets reviewed by me, and I send a letter back to the program chief and let them thank you know thank them for sending me that. And sometimes they're a warning letter. We don't want to lose our representation at these facilities. So if you're going to appoint somebody to be involved, make sure they are able to make it to these meetings. Now, life happens, and I understand people get ill uh, or sick. or If you need to do a change, don't be afraid to send us and say, hey, we need to remove so-and-so and put some, somebody else in. We're glad to do it. These joint reviews are very important for us as an organization because I can also track how much money is being donated by Chapter 12 in Michigan or who, wherever they're at, so I know what's going on in those facilities. Okay. This right here is a uh, a form 20, and it's a little. I know it's a little bit blurry. It's just the way we kind of stretched it out here. Uh, but uh, when we get these forms in uh, from VABS, they need to be completed in their entirety. Uh, a lot of times, I'll get an individual's name first and last name, but I'm missing the address uh, of a volunteer. How can I recognize he or she for their time if I don't get their address? And I know at VA they say, I'm not asking for anybody's social security number. I, I've had a lot of emails, well, is there a form out there? We've updated that form about five years ago. But none of our DAV forms are going to request or ask for a social security number. Uh, we understand identity theft is a big deal. We, we don't want that information. I do ask for the date of birth if I can get it because if I have a common name like Thomas Smith, um, I can't identify who that person is without the date of birth. Again, if you can get the, the information from us during a meeting or directly speaking with the volunteer, that's great. It just goes into our database so we know we can identify and recognize that particular individual for his or her act, uh, volunteer activities. Nothing else. Okay, this is a, the VA Form 50, and this is the form that we get that says, um, 
what they do is in a monthly basis in DAV volunteer and voluntary services. Um, I cannot track or help veterans without getting these hours recorded. In 2018, there were nearly 25% of the facilities that didn't report any hours for the entire year. Um, and I talked about this very same thing at midwinter and I had a bunch of people rush up at the end of the, the conference say, am I one of them, am I one of them? We've talked to everybody. Uh, just continue to do the best you can in getting me this information. And I'm gonna say in a timely manner, I really, really, really need your help on getting all of our information, all of the reporting uh, within 30 days. And you know, there are volunteers out there giving their, their most precious commodity and that's their time. And if I don't get that information in a timely manner, I can't recognize them. And we're doing a better job of getting our awards and our incentives out. I talked to a volunteer here. He got a real cool Made in America product. All of our incentives are made in America. I'm very proud to say that. Um, and we had to figure out, it's a wallet. It's pretty neat, a uh, real nice leather wallet. So get us that information in a timely manner so we can update our records and make sure we recognize you as soon as possible. Teamwork is essential to anything that we do as an organization. So for DAV success, we have to work harmoniously with the individuals we come in contact with. It's important for you to continue to be unified as an organization and help us continue to grow. Volunteers should establish a good working relationship with program managers in the facilities, the chiefs, and other VA staff at their local facilities. Um, this goes a long way. It, it carries our brand, our reputation as an organization. Um, key skills to being a team player include communication, listening, being reliable and not forgetting to be respectful to others, all things that we were taught as children and as servicemen and women. Um, you need to be a good volunteer and clearly communicate your ideas with everyone you come in contact with. Uh, just because we're doing something today this way doesn't mean that we can't find a better way to do it. So if you have a good idea, don't be afraid to share it. I had somebody come up and share an idea with me this morning. We'll hold on to that idea and see if it's gonna be something beneficial in the future. Um, but most importantly, be reliable. If you say you're gonna be somewhere, do your best to be there. Um, this will let your other uh, volunteers know that you're respectful and uh, it means a lot and they have trust in you for what you're doing. Here's a cool little video as we transition.
Thank you. We did receive five Academy nominations for that this video, uh, and I want to thank again uh, the communication staff, more specifically Austin Schaffner, for getting that video done. He did all that himself. It took us a one day. Great video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a resource that's available for you. It's meant to be funny, but the, there are you know it's a great way to show how easy you can actually get out and give back to somebody. With that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Ron Minner. He's going to push through the rest of this and uh, we'll turn it over for some questions and answers. Morning. So what I'd like to talk to you about, uh, some of you that are in here were at the CNA orientation at headquarters uh, a month or so ago. And we're going to kind of recap some of these program changes with regard to our volunteer recognition programs, which is our George Sill, DAV George Sill Award, and our DAVA George Sill Award, and our Jesse Brown Youth Memorial Scholarship uh, program that we have. How many volunteers are in here? How many of you are familiar with Jesse Brown Scholarship and the George Sill Award? Guess how many applications we got from around the country for George Seal uh, recognition this year for convention? I'm not even going to tell you the number, but it was, you're not too far off. And, and, and on a serious note, that it's kind of a shame because you all know somebody at the hospital volunteer, and we get our reports into the office. And I think, John, every hospital in the country is represented with at least one DAV volunteer or one auxiliary volunteer. In most cases, it's a lot of them, and we're not we're not going out and recognize them. It may be because you don't know who they are. Um, it may be that they're at a facility away from the one you volunteer at. But we need to do our part. We want to recognize our volunteers and make sure that we're giving credit to all of you, and especially recognizing that top volunteer that's selected by the committee when we get those applications in. So that John and I were talking and our team, and we we figured, how can we change this? How can we make it easier for you to get that information to us? Because we rely on the departments when those Commander's Award announcements go out, and we rely on the chiefs and program managers at the VA hospitals, where they're tasked with so many other things. When they get our request for another application, it usually goes on the back burner somewhere. So we're going to try to make this as easy as possible for all of you. What we're going to do is, these are still going to be Commander's Awards. I want to point that out real quick. The Jesse Brown open application period is going to begin in, uh, on May 1st. And you're going to have all year until the following, February 28th, to get us nominations for the Jesse Brown uh, scholarship uh, applicants, or the, the youth volunteers. On the George Seal side of it, for DAV and DAV Auxiliary, we're going to take our top 10 volunteers from every department, that's DV and auxiliary, okay? We're going to send every department a list of those top 10 volunteers, and we're, we're running this list based on who had volunteer hours within this, the current year that we're working in. That list will show you their current year volunteer hours and their lifetime hours. And I, I don't know how clear that is up there for you. Can you see that? You'll see on the far right in the top corner the lifetime VAVS hours, 10,295 in this example here. And then it's got the current year's volunteer hours, 731. And as you go down, they're all listed the same. And it tells you what facility they volunteer at. So the idea is we provide you this information. We have access to these reports. We send you those top 10, and we're asking the commanders and adjutants from every department to establish, if you don't already have one, a, an awards committee. We want you to determine who that top volunteer is for DAV and DAV auxiliary. Send that application for those two to us. We don't want an application for all of these. And 
hopefully at the end of the day, we have, what is it, 104 applications from every department. One auxiliary, one DAV, right? And then you can take those top two recipients for DAV and the auxiliary that you recognize, send those to us. They become competitive with the other departments for the national award that we give away here at convention. I don't know if we can make it any easier. We hope that this is an easy way for you to have that information at hand and make a selection and send that to us. In turn, I would suggest recognizing those two that you send to us as your State Department Convention, as your Volunteer of the Year, if you're not already doing that. Auxiliary, it'll be two separate reports for DAV and then the auxiliary report, and it'll be the same. Youth volunteers. There's not going to be as many eligible youth uh, volunteers, but we need to do our part to recognize them. That's our future, that's our future leaders, and they're going to carry the torch, and, and they're uh, taking that message on with them to college, and typically we, we receive a lot of feedback from them, and these become, uh, you know, our, our torch bearers, and they're teaching other youth as they get older about those opportunities within the VA systems, and a lot of them become donors as they become more successful in life. And they remember what DAV did for them in providing that volunteer opportunity, more important, the scholarship that they received to allow them to uh, go to college or uh, university or some vocational school somewhere. So we want to make sure we do our part to recognize them. On this report, it does show the address. We had to take that out for the purposes of the seminar this morning. But when you get this, and if you need to contact them or, or get their application together, contact us at headquarters. We will provide you with all the personal information that will allow you to reach out to those youth uh, volunteers to get their information and submit those applications. We'll send you the top, how many ever youth are eligible in the state. We want to say top 10, but there's times where you may only have five youth that meet the eligibility requirements. If you want to send an application for all five, please do. If you have two that stand out, you want to send those in, and they can still self-nominate, so you're not, you're not keeping them out of the process. If you don't recognize them, then they can still go through the VA or self-nominate themselves. You have the you have uh, the opportunity for the youth, it used to be a 100-hour minimum requirement within the, the application year. We've gotten away from that. It's hard. Some of these youth are working. They may not have transportation to go volunteer when they want to. So the requirement now is that they have 100 hours minimum lifetime to achieve that uh, eligibility for the scholarship. We thought there would be a, a big change in the number of applications we received. It made a little difference, but not as much as we thought. So. Again, we're going to send this report to every department as well. Hopefully the department folks and your uh, awards committee, whoever you appoint, <clears throat> can get together and give us some viable candidates so the committee can really go through these and, and make sure we're selecting the right people. We've had some great folks uh, receive the scholarship. You, you saw our recipient in the opening session, and uh, what a wonderful young lady she is. But there's so many more of them out there that we need to recognize and, and consider for these scholarships. So with the lifetime hour, 100 hours, that's not just VADS volunteer hours. This is also LVAP, or Local Veterans Assistance Program <clears throat> hours, or a combination of the two to meet that minimum 100 hour goal to become eligible. And that's what you'll see on these reports here when we send those out to you. Uh, that being said, we need to make sure that we capture those hours. I know a lot of chapters go out talk to some of the department leadership and some chapter folks. When you do a project within the community and you have the kids out there, we're not necessarily getting those reports in. We're, we get caught up in what we're doing, which is great, but then we forget to say, hey, we need to turn these hours in. And that's for you all as well. And that helps those kids become eligible. And we want to track those hours and we want to have as much accurate data as we possibly can. So keep that in mind when you're out in the communities doing these projects outside of the VABS system because those hours are sent to us automatically. And again, this is just an example. Um, you'll have lifetime hours and for the youth and their uh, current year hours for LVAP and VABS. Those will both be on the report. 
and they won't. Let me go back. Uh, if you notice in that middle column, that middle uh, red arrow here, you'll see some adjustment in the hours. So you may go down and this one here is stacked based on the most hours within the current year. If you go to the right column, there's no particular order there. That's their lifetime hours. So naturally, we want to recognize people and, and thank them for what they've done in their lifetime. But when we're recognizing somebody in 2019, we want to recognize them for what they've done over the lifetime, but what they've done in the current year as well. It's also an opportunity for you to engage these volunteers if you don't know who they are, bring them in, figure out what their su success stories are, and share that information, and, and let's keep building this program. So this application here, we have it's fillable. You can print it and fill it out if you'd like. We've had to chop it up for you to be able to see it here, so it's going to be in, in several pages. Please fill this form out in its entirety as best as possible. We want to know as much information. If you want to get something from a, a program manager at the hospital that's with these volunteers every day and, and or if you know some additional facts about them and, and their efforts, fill this out. We, we need that information to make a good decision make sure we're uh, recognizing those top candidates. Uh, again, th this will be two pages when you get the form, but we had to chop it up here so it was viewable. And we've changed who signs this form. I, I think in the past we had the program managers, the chiefs, the department agent, the department commander, and we were just asking too much and, and making it more difficult to get the results that we wanted. So as you can see, we're just asking for a commander's signature or or someone from the department. And, and this does not preclude the program managers and chiefs from submitting this anymore. We're making it easier for you where we don't have to go out and get that signature and uh, email those back to us. The George Seal will still go out in November. I think the first week of November is our, our target to get that out. The deadline will be February 28th. Once you have that committee together, I hope this makes it easy. Uh, we can discuss this afterwards, but. All we're asking is that you email those, those two candidates back at the, uh, during the application uh, period. Jesse Brown Memorial Scholarship, same thing. Fill it out in its entirety. We get a lot of people that will submit an application to us and they say, hey, what can I do to make my kid better than the other ones? Well, that's not a fair question. But what you can do is when they talk about what is volunteering meant to you, well, I went to the hospital and I helped some veterans. Well, we understand you do that when you show up, but tell us a story. What, what, what's something unique that you've learned or that you witnessed and that you've been able to do? What kind of awards, what kind of difference have you made within that system and in the lives of those veterans that you volunteer for every day? We want to tell that story. We need it to be as descriptive as possible because we get some pretty good candidates, as the committee will tell you, and, and we want to be able to decipher those applications and decision on those top recipients or who that should be. And again, we're not asking for all the signatures. Uh, we're trying to make it simple. This will be a two-page application as well. And you can, uh, the email address for the submission is there at the bottom of the form. We're still going to be Commander's Awards. Don't, don't misconstrue that. We're just changing how we solicit the awards and how we get that information back. And again, at the end of the day, we want to make this as easy as possible for everybody in here and all the departments. And I'm telling all of you this because I want the chapters to push the departments too. Get on those committees and, and let, let's get this information together and get it back to us. And then every department, there's no reason why we shouldn't be recognizing a volunteer of the year at your state conventions. And then we have some uh, good candidates uh, that are national for the national. These links are also online. Uh, as John said earlier, this presentation will be available for everyone. And you can go there and, and <coughs> excuse me, get that information. When the announcements go out for the award, the open enrollment period, if you will, this information will be submitted again with that to every department. But anyway, I want to thank you. Uh, again, we encourage you wholeheartedly to please Work with us, work with yourselves, and, and let's recognize our volunteers for what they do. They're out there every day. We thank you for what you do, and uh, we want to make sure we recognize all of them and, and give them the credit they deserve. Thank you, guys.
And just to piggyback on that, and then we'll ask some questions. Uh, with, with the youth, make sure you uh, tell us what they're doing in school. As you saw in the video, Haley is a track star, 4.0 GPA. Uh, make sure you put all that stuff in that nomination. That goes a long way. Uh, these kids are doing remarkable stuff, and we don't want to just, like Ron said, focus on volunteerism. How are they acting in the community? What are they doing in their school? Are, are they in a choir? Those type of things are, are really, really good tidbits to add to that application. So we have a microphone right here, and we have a, about 20 minutes for some questions, and we'll clear out so uh, Dan Clare can prepare for his presentation. Uh, make sure everything's working. Yes, sir. And I, I, you know, I want to do a challenge to each and every one of you in the room. I challenge everybody in this room to send me one nomination for any of these things this year. Can I get a commitment from you guys to do that? Can I get a commitment from you guys to do that? Please help us increase these numbers, and we'll go ahead and start with the questions. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, no, sir. No, sir. We uh, are in the process of building a new CRM system that we're going to implement here in the next 24 months. And uh, so for the time being, we will continue to use DAV 360 internally. And once we get this new CRM up and running, it's going to roll out in separate phases. Uh, we'll probably expand on that in a few years. But uh, for the time being, just keep doing things the way you're doing it. Thank you, Paul. Yes, sir. Yes, there is. It's typically 14 years old. Some facilities have it a little higher depending on the, the level of care that's in that particular hospital. Uh, check with your program manager at the facility. They have a guideline for that. As far as the LVAP program, I would say 13 is probably a good number to start, but I leave it up to the individual parents who are allowing their youth to volunteer at that point. Okay, thank you very Say your question, repeat your question for me, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know the programs for the DA facilities, we have a lot of uh, senior retirement homes in our area, and there's a youth, I'm sure, that are volunteering and participating in uh, veterans. Could that possibly be brought into the program? Yes, that's correct. If they're at a state home, you can do that through the LVAP program. Uh, if they're at a VA medical facility, they would need to do that through the VABS program. So just get the form that enrolls them as a volunteer in our system which was in this presentation, and submit their hours through the LVAP program if they're doing it at a state home. Thank you. Yes, if you're a hospital service coordinator and that's your responsibility, that's well, what you're doing. Yes, and I would encourage you to fill out those forms and submit them to us so we can recognize those volunteers. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Past party command of John Kenny, great state of Virginia, Commonwealth. <laughs> uh, question, you were talking about the annual review and you were talking about some of the errors that were, if that annual review is my understanding is between the Chief of Officer Services and the VABS representative, am I correct? That's correct. So those errors uh, occurred uh, by not having the VBS representative there or the, the chief of volunteer services it's, actually having to turn it in. It, it's typically there's not a VABS rep there, and so we get that, and they say that they've missed all their meetings or along those lines, and that's when we send a warning letter and advise you guys uh, to find somebody who can fill that role so we don't lose our representation at that facility. Uh, that's typically, I'd say 95% of the time, the mistake. And you are saying that if a department has a VABS rep, then that rep is responsible for making sure that those things are uh, accurately uh, completed. 
That is correct. It's, a, it's basically a, like a counseling session. It, it, I don't like using that term, but it's a, an interaction between the two to say what we've done good, what we can do better, and what are the goals for the upcoming year. And uh, last thing, I have about 30 minutes of Absolutely. Anything for you, John. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Cassandra Benjamin from uh, Union Chapter 6, also in the great state of Maine. Uh, uh, I just wanted to encourage the other DSO uh, or chapter that are here that we have needed this program to be assisted at our chapter um, from our several maintenance folks across the water to assist with cleanup and things in our chapter when we're going, undergoing repairs and then also most recently with the outside. Thank you. I'm Jerry Arman from Chapter 11 from the state of uh, no, state of California. <laughs> Maybe all of you. Thank you. Um, we have a major hospital uh, about 40 miles away from where our chapter is, and there are uh, a large number of volunteers there. My understanding is that uh, the various counselors, you know, at the high schools are advising and supporting uh, the Bedford Hospital by uh, having these students uh, volunteer. But they don't know about verification and verify forewords and certainly not about our wonderful organization. And I'm wondering, without, without soliciting, how, how can we Well, that goes back to our literature and talking about the scholarship program. If you can hand that stuff out or make it readily available where somebody can walk by and grab it, they can make their own informed decision about who they choose to volunteer their time. Um, I do visit with school counselors and talk to people throughout the country, and we share that information. That's why we produce this literature. Uh, I would advise you to make a request to get some of our literature and share it with those counselors and let them share that information at will with those youth and they can make an informed decision about who they choose to volunteer their time with and hopefully be eligible for our scholarship. Thank you very much. Thank you. John Bolton, Franklin, just to kind of build on that, a couple of years ago we started the Jesse Brown Initiative where we put together a folder with Jesse Brown information and we went to all the high schools and talked to the counselors. Maine's high schools require that their students have a volunteer hour when they graduate. So it's a great opportunity to talk about the DAB and to talk about this program, and that's how you get young people signing up at the VA at the hospital to go to the DAB. Thank, that's what we're doing. Thank you, John. I appreciate that initiative. That's exactly what we need to be doing in our community. Great. Andy Patterson, Department of Cancer. Yes, sir. How do you get a correction to your sign up website? Are you talking about for volunteer for veterans? It's just, you just should pick the department because it automatically rolls to the department. If you find something, if you send me a screenshot, I'll take a look at it and see if we can get it fixed. Oh, we'll definitely want to get that fixed. New Hampshire, okay? We'll, we'll make a note of that and we'll talk to our uh, IT guru to get that turned up. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, you just have to come visit with us when we get done here, and we'll help you with your problem. Are there, if, there's no, if there's not any more questions, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming in and joining us this morning. I hope you found this riveting. I know I love the video myself. Um, please take these resources back and uh, uh, utilize them. I, again, I want to thank the chapters and the departments for their support and sponsorships of our Adaptive Sports Program. Um, if you're unaware of, of what we're doing in that avenue, please reach out to Ron or myself or Ashley Pelly. 
Um, you know, we got the tea tournament coming up in less than 30 days in central Iowa, and it's a remarkable event. We couldn't do it without the support of the chapters and departments that are present at this convention. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day.